Welcome to the LHG department. So this is most of what we've been working on over the past half year. This is our prototype scale power chain. So basically what we have is a liquid hydrogen tank that goes in here. We have our liquid hydrogen going in and it has a whole trajectory and it goes all around into the fuel cell that's in it here. Fuel cell, as you've probably heard before, makes electricity out of the hydrogen and it can propel the motor right here where we can run, put a little propeller on. So basically, this is what is gonna go into the aircraft, but then on a much, much smaller scale. So the liquid hydrogen powertrain starts at the storage vessel. This is our liquid hydrogen tank. Uh, it stores all of our liquid hydrogen. Liquid hydrogen is really, really cold, and we wanna keep it that way. Therefore, we have a vacuum insulated double wall tank. This means that there's an inner tank and an outer tank. In the inner tank, your liquid hydrogen sits, and in between, there's a layer of vacuum which makes sure that you don't have any convection or conduction of heat into your tank. We can see this pipe right here. Um, this is where we refuel the tank. So this is where hydrogen gets put in. And on this line right here, the hydrogen gets taken out. We take the hydrogen out by introducing extra heat into our tank. There's little heating pads on the bottom right here that basically if you run a current into it, they give, uh, we, we actively heat up the hydrogen. Therefore, it will start boiling off and we can take off the boiled gaseous hydrogen out of this pipe. Right here, you can see um, a burst disc, and on the back bottom here, there is a safety valve. These two are safety systems. They make sure that if for some reason the pressure in the tank would rise too much, that they blow open and all the pressurized gas can leave the system instead of our tank blowing up. Right here, we have our feed through. So here we can have the wires to the heating pads that I just mentioned. And we have three temperature sensors inside of this tank. Lastly, we have this little part here, and this is where we can pull or re-pull the vacuum insulation around the inner tank. Now, I can nicely close this off. Our hydrogen follows out, and this is where our heat exchanger starts. So the hydrogen gets taken out of the tank through this line. It enters what we call this little heat exchanger. It's actually a constant and wired coal. So constantin is a metal that its resistance doesn't change with temperature, meaning that if you put a certain amount of current through it, we know pretty much how much water you're putting in, and therefore we can control how much heat gets put into the hydrogen flow. Of course, the hydrogen, when it comes out of this tank, it's in gaseous form, but it's still really, really cold. Therefore, we want to heat it up before it enters our fuel cell. So that's what this is for. We have two wires that basically we can run current into the heat exchanger, and our little thermocouple wire, which is our temperature sensor. So we know how much heat we need to put into the um, heat exchanger. The hydrogen can then run out on two sides. We have one line for venting, because again, if we overpressurize the system, we want to be able to relieve it. And the other line can go to the fuel cell. Now, uh, we're not fully done yet with assembling this whole power chain. So from here on out, we still need to make some connections. So we need to make sure that this one connects to our pressure regulator right here that connects down to the fuel cell. And we need to make another connection to our pressure relief system. We have a manual valve right here that we can open during refueling procedures if we want to really just make the tank completely atmospheric. We have a pressure relief valve. It's right now, it's a little closed. Um, and that is a mechanical system to make, again, a lot of safety, a redundant safety system to make sure that the pressure doesn't increase to a uh, too high level. And we have another, another pressure regulator. This is, will be our main venting line. So during operations, sometimes your pressure, your pressure rises a bit too much because you want it to stay at a, certain, at a constant pressure for your fuel cell. Therefore, you need to be able to vent it. What's very nice about these is that they're also sensors. So we know exactly what's pressure inside of the system. We know exactly how much we're venting, how much we're venting, as there's also a mass flow sensor inside of these. Of course, they will be assembled. You'll see that later. And if we go continue on to the back right here, we get to the brains of this whole power chain. So this is our control board. We have our main control board that exists of a high voltage side and a low voltage side. On the high voltage side, we get power straight from the fuel cell that goes in here and that gets distributed over four ports. Two ports for the heat exchanger and two ports for the boiling pads inside of the tank. Two ports to increase the temperature, two ports to increase the pressure. That's basically what we use it for. We have a low voltage side that basically does all the logic. The PID controllers that run and determine how much power is actually required to go into our heating pads to go into our heat exchanger. We have a Raspberry Pi right here. The Raspberry Pi will control our two pressure regulators. It will control how much they need to vent out, 
um, in order to get the right pressure. And it also stores all the data with mass flows, um, different kinds of pressures on both sides, the temperature of these um, pressure regulators. So that's really nice to know. Then we have um, little amplifiers right here. So two amplifiers are used for temperature sensors inside of our tank. And one amplifier is used for the temperature sensor at the end of our heat exchanger. We can now move on to the fuel cell section of the power chain. So this is our fuel cell. And basically in here is where the hydrogen gets inputted. And this thing will turn the hydrogen into electricity by combining it with air it takes from the atmosphere. We get DC power out of the fuel cell and it goes here into this little box which we call the hybrid card. Basically, this is where the power from the fuel cell and our batteries gets combined so that it can be sent to the rest of the system. Sometimes our fuel cell doesn't provide enough power and we need extra boost from the batteries. Um, that's why we have this hybrid card. It needs some extra cooling so it has a heat sink. The power then continues from the hybrid card to on one side our ESC. This is our electronic speed controller and it turns the DC current coming from the fuels on the batteries into three-phase AC that we can use to spin our motor. Another part, another part of the power gets distributed to the high voltage side of the control board. We're almost done uh, assembling all of this, but uh, hopefully in a week we can go to our testing side at TNO and then give it a go. Hi, welcome. Here is the finalized prototype powertrain from the liquid hydrogen team. It has all the components integrated uh, into a small space. That's really what we try to achieve when going in the air in aviation. Uh, this is really to, to test the powertrain, which will eventually be implemented into this airframe. Uh, we're going to test next week um, to see if the system works uh, to test for leaks and yeah get insight and knowledge about the system and then eventually use it in this one thank you <laughs>